Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of genetic information, variation and relationships, more specifically on biodiversity within a community. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lessons seven and eight in this tutorial, covering biodiversity. This is the seventh video in our series of eight lessons on the topic of DNA and genes. In the last lesson, we learnt about taxonomy and phylogenetic classification. We also know that each species can be named using the binomial system. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. First, we will look at biodiversity, then at how to measure it, and finally the human impact on biodiversity and climate change. Here are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a quick read through them before we begin. First we will look at biodiversity. Biodiversity is the measure of all variety of life within a particular habitat, ecosystem, biome or all over the earth. A habitat is the area where one or more organisms live. For example, the pond could be a habitat of a fish. In a community, all the populations are present inside a single habitat. A pond might be home to fish, toads, birds and insects. There are different levels of biodiversity. Species diversity is the number of different species within an area. Habitat diversity is the number of different habitats within an area. As we've seen, the pond can be one big habitat, but it also has many small habitats within it, such as the water and the grassland. These can cater for the different populations. Intraspecific diversity is the diversity in genes within a species. whilst interspecific diversity is the diversity in genes between different species. Now we will cover species richness. Biodiversity can be quantified using species richness and evenness. Species richness is defined as the number of species within a particular region or habitat. Species richness only measures the number of different species, but not the number of individuals in each species. Therefore, a species with only 10 individuals is counted equally as a species with 100 individuals. Species evenness will take into account the number of individuals in each species. Using species evenness, we can develop a distribution of all the species in a region, as well as how equal their populations are. If all species have a fairly comparable number of individuals, then the species evenness is considered to be high. If all the species have incomparable numbers of individuals, then the species evenness is considered to be low. Which of these two populations has a higher species richness?
population A has a higher species richness compared to species B. Which of these has a higher species evenness? In this case, population B has more species evenness compared to population A. Simpson's diversity index is a measure of the relationship between the number of different species in a habitat and the number of individuals within each species. It can be calculated using the formula shown here. Let's compare biodiversity. A highly biodiverse and stable environment will have a high D value. This also indicates that the particular environment has good biological health. A non-biodiverse and unstable environment has a low D value. This also indicates that the particular environment has got poor biological health. Now let's look at interpreting the index of diversity. Have a go at working out the Simpson's diversity index for populations A and B. For species A, there are eight organisms in total. There are three toads and four fish. There is only one heron, meaning that the Simpson's diversity index works out as 3.11. For population B, there are 24 organisms in total. There are 12 toads and 12 fish, making the diversity index 2.09. Finally, we will cover the techniques that can reduce and conserve biodiversity. Throughout our history, humans have had a negative impact on overall biodiversity of the earth. Hunting, poaching, development of agriculture in cities have led to large-scale extinctions of many species, resulting in an overall reduction in biodiversity. Farming has led to some problems, as farmers will use multiple techniques in order to maximise food production. The largest effect is brought about by destroying habitats. Loss of habitats results in the loss of shelter, food, water and other resources that organisms need to survive. This can lead to the extinction of different species in the ecosystem. And this also leads to a loss of biodiversity. A loss of trees will lead to soil erosion. The tree roots usually hold the soil in place, so without them, the rain and the wind will remove the soil from the area. This will lead to a loss in the nutritional value of the soil. Pesticides are toxic to certain organisms within the ecosystem. Herbicides will kill undesired weeds. Pesticides can kill other animals. They can even have an effect on the animals in the water if the pesticide makes it into the river systems. Herbicides will kill other plants aside from weeds. This will reduce the plant biodiversity and can affect animals that rely on the weeds for food. Using fertilizers can lead to eutrophication. Let's see how this happens. Fertilizers provide nutrients to help farmers promote good crop growth. These fertilizers can get mixed in with the rainwater, which carries them to nearby bodies of water. They can also pass through the soil and into the lakes. This can lead to a spike in nitrogen or ammonia and other nutrients in the water. The overgrowth of plants removes oxygen from the water. 
the spike in nutrients and nitrogen will cause these aquatic plants to grow rapidly, but the aquatic animals are killed. Ultimately, eutrophication leads to the large-scale die-off of aquatic organisms, and eventually the plants themselves. Selective breeding is choosing plants and animals with the best traits, and breeding them more. This leads to less genetic diversity in farm animals and an overall loss in biodiversity. It's important to understand that modern farming is unsustainable. Its effects can lead to severe food shortages. Soil erosion due to farming leads to poor nutritional quality of the soil, eventually leading to a shortage of food once the soil is nutritionally wasted. Conservation of wild species of domesticated animals allows for a genetically diverse population of animals that can be used later on. Preventing deforestation will help to improve the soil quality, promoting better farming. Land and habitat preservation promotes biological diversity which ultimately helps domesticated plants and animals as well. The use of fossil fuels leads to the greenhouse gas effect, which in turn causes global warming. Global warming causes the temperatures on Earth to increase drastically. Due to climate change, the organisms are not adapted. This means that there is a loss of suitable habitat. Due to this, other organisms can outcompete them leading to a loss in biodiversity. There can be an increase in diseases, which promotes the prol proliferation of many disease-causing organisms. Climate change is not mentioned directly in the specification for this section, but it's useful to understand it, and you can definitely add it to, into your exam answers. We've now covered all the specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you feel unsure about. We've now completed Lesson 7. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of the topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.